So these days most mushrooms are grown inside in climate controlled environments but it hasn't always been that way. In this lesson we're going to take a look at the history of mushroom cultivation. Let's start at the beginning. So thousands of years before people began to grow mushrooms they were already eating and consuming them and it probably goes back much further than the evidence that we have but the very first bit of evidence there appears to be comes from about 19,000 years ago uh, from a cave in northern Spain. It was found in the remains of a, a lady that had been uncovered there some spores of a number of different mushroom varieties and they were found in the spore on, on her teeth, these spores found on her teeth uh, indicating that she was eating several different varieties of mushrooms uh, that came from the group of Boletus, which is um, a famous edible mushroom, and also the agaric group of mushrooms. So it appears that at least 19,000 years ago, people in Spain were eating a few different types of edible mushrooms, and probably they've been doing the same all over the world for much longer. There are also bits of evidence from uh, anywhere from 10,000 right the way through uh, to 2,000 years ago uh, of all over the world, people apparently taking hallucinogenic mushrooms um, and then capturing this in various forms of art whether it's the statues like we can see here or on cave paintings which have been found all across Europe and North Africa and so we can see from this evidence at least that the interaction between humans and mushrooms goes back thousands of years but in terms of how long we've been cultivating them it's much less so the first evidence of cultivation seems to come from Japan whereby uh, they began growing shiitake mushrooms on logs and the method was quite basic but they would take some wild uh, fruiting logs of shiitake and place them next to some freshly cut logs in order that some of the spores would spread from the mushroom into the logs. But it was still fairly unreliable and the first kind of reliable ongoing production of mushrooms that we see around the world started in Paris in France around about 300 years ago and it was observed that compost with horse manure and straw was naturally producing these white agaragus uh, button mushrooms and some people decided to take that a step further and, and try and keep the cultivation going and they did so in these empty quarries underneath Paris so all of this limestone that had been mined out to build the buildings in the city of Paris uh, became the perfect growing environment for the mushrooms to grow. So they were taking horse manure and straw um, which was coming from all over the rural areas of northern France was coming in on uh, trains and then on horse and cart and bringing it to the the quarries and they would then compost this down a little bit once it had composted for a while they would then introduce the uh, mushroom mycelium into it and then manage the growing process in these rows that you can see in the pictures there. Um, and this appeared to work pretty well and there were some very profitable mushroom farms for a good long time in Paris. And that process then spread uh, both to England and then on to America and was really the beginning of the, the large scale uh, button mushroom industry. So over the last 50 to 100 years that process has really been refined and scaled up massively and in the early days there were problems with having reliable spawn and in the early 1900s there were some processes uh, developed in universities that meant you could have good sterile technique and produce reliable spawn and on the back of that lots of money was poured into mushroom production and these huge scale uh, profit driven mushroom farms emerged like the one you can see in the picture here. This was from Taiwan and we'll see towards the end of this lesson another video where we see a, a huge scale mushroom farm. So just to give you a very quick taste of the scale of this, it's huge. We're talking 10 million tons of mushrooms per year being produced worth about 40 billion dollars every year. And this is quite interesting to see the breakdown of the, the varieties of mushrooms grown. Um, although the white button mushroom, the agaricus, is the most common mushroom, it's, it's only about 40% of production and oyster and shiitake mushrooms equate for quite a lot and there are other varieties which are being added to that increasingly cultivated but most of these mushrooms are being produced in Asia look at that, 76% of all the mushrooms grown in the world are produced in Asia 
obviously a lot of them are also consumed there because uh, Asian cultures have a, a real appreciation for mushrooms but a lot of them are also shipped on to Europe and to America to be eaten. So alongside this kind of large-scale uh, history of mushroom cultivation there's also been a, a small low-tech version of it where people have been bringing the process into their homes and this started um, alongside the the butter mushroom cultivation in the the caves there was a, a home scale version of that going on in France and in England and America and this book by William Faulkner here mushrooms and how to grow them which was published in 1891 became a, a really useful textbook for anyone that was into doing it like this and the methods that they were using would they would take some wild spawn so they would dig up a bit of soil uh, where these mushrooms were seen to be growing in a field and take that and use that adding it to fresh compost um, and the method was really unreliable it worked sometimes a lot of the rest of the time you just got mold or no mushrooms at all but people carried on with that for quite a long time to produce the sideline income in the gardens um, some people did it as a small business but it wasn't really until the 1960s I suppose that uh, the process became refined and more reliable and that actually started with interest in cultivating psychoactive mushrooms so in the 1950s, 60s and 70s there was at first academic research and then following on from that uh, an underground subculture that took these techniques and publicized them with some really popular uh, guidebooks and the process spread massively, people were doing it a lot more at home, but it was still a process of sterilizing the substrate in pressure cookers uh, mainly, and then growing them on from there. And it was still fairly complicated for anybody that um, wasn't kind of biologically trained um, and didn't have this kind of setup and equipment. In the 1980s and 90s, uh, Paul Stamets um, really helped to bring the process of growing edible mushrooms into uh, the forefront with a couple of really good textbooks. One, that one we can see in the picture here was one that I first learned from. Very in-depth, lots of detail and for the first time really took the knowledge that was being used mainly in the larger mushroom farms and made it available for people at home to pick up and run with as well. And then of course when the internet really exploded uh, in the mid to end of the 90s all of that knowledge just became much easier to share with people and to spread and people began to really push the boat with experimenting with different methods that didn't require quite so much sterile technique. There were lots of advancements with people doing it simple, low-tech at home and really that's kind of where our interest has, has evolved from in a way as well. We've also been experimenting and learning along the way, trying to simplify the process so you don't need so much sterile set up and um, this process will continue to evolve I'm sure. So if you'd like to find out more about low tech ways to grow mushrooms check out our farm tour video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching, I look forward to seeing you soon.